Hey people, this is Daniel from Devil and Sons Guitars here and today I'm going to be talking about how you can get a mirror finish on your guitar like this using polishing compounds and a drill. Great, so here I've got a guitar ready to go and what we're going to be talking about today is polishing compounds. But to get to the point for using the polishing compounds, I've resprayed this guitar body for a customer. I stripped it, resprayed it, it's had nitro put on it, I've sanded it back using various levels of sandpaper down to 2000 grit so it's nice and smooth ready for the polishing compound. Now you may already have your guitar resprayed ready to do this or maybe you're taking a guitar body you've already got that over the years has had some scratches put on it and you want to use the polishing compounds to clean it up. Totally fine to do that. I've obviously taken all the hardware off because I've resprayed it. If you are doing it to a body you've already got using the method I'm going to use, it's easier to take the hardware off because then you can work across the whole body. If you're working around the hardware, it might be harder to do it like this. You might have to do it all by hand. It still might work, but essentially the polishing compounds are a bit like when you're polishing a car. You're getting rid of the scratches, you're getting a high shine on it. So what we can sort of see on here is there's a bit of a shine on the body. Um, it's a bit muted. What's going to happen with the polishing compounds is it's slowly going to get brighter and brighter and more shiny, more reflective, more mirror-like, but it's going to take a lot of hard work. So what I'm use is this Meguiar's mirror glaze stuff. Uh, actually, I've got two different types of Meguiar's that I use. Um, you can see that this one, Ultra Cut Compound 105, is marked as an extra heavy cut. So if we compare this to what a lot of people know, um, sandpaper for example, the higher the number on here is a bit like more rough sandpaper. So to get the final finish on something you use lighter sandpaper. But this is nowhere near as rough even as that 2000 grit sandpaper I'm using. So I'm starting with the extra heavy cut, the ultra cut compound 105. And then I'm going to move on and use um, mirror glaze so it's 205 you can see it's a lighter cut is how it's marked up on here Meguiar's do a range of different um, finishings and different levels of cut these are the two that I found work really well for me there might be other makes you can use as well I've used this for quite a few years and think it's great I'll leave some links for finishing compounds in my um, in the links below so you can get it through Amazon I also love using this turtle wax I don't really know if it makes a lot of difference, but I always find when I put this on the final, I, I do one final run with this, that actually it adds to the shine a bit. You'll see as we go along. But really you could just get away with using those two or something similar. Basically the sort of compound that you might use to clean a, uh, polish a car up with. Now, the way I apply it is quite simple. I use a drill, a drill driver. And then for my drill driver, I've got this. It's a Velcro pad that literally just screws in. And then you can turn it. And then onto the Velcro pad, for each of the different glazes I've got here, I've got a separate pad like this that I use that sticks on. Actually, this one's a bit worn already. Um, it just sticks on, and then I apply the compound to that, and then I work around it. I'm going to go over how I do that later. You could do this by hand. Obviously, using a... A drill is going to be much faster, much faster with a drill. The other alternative is you can get polishing machines, a bit like you might use for a car, that you can handheld and go round. The thing is about them is they're a lot bigger than this, so they cover more area, which might be good, but I find this is good for when we're going round the edges of the guitar. Again, I'll come on to that as we go along. Another option to using a drill is to use something like this, a pneumatic sander. Again, it's got the Velcro head on it, normally for sanding discs or buffing and polishing, so exactly the same as using the drill. Once I've put one layer of the compound on, rubbed it in with that, I then use some just um, plain cotton to, to rub it down with, to rub off that compound, and then I always use a chamois cloth to go over it again. And then what I tend to do is use the same finishing compound two, three, or four times on the surface, depending on how I think it's looking. For today, I'm probably gonna do three of each of these and one or two of the turtle wax. What I won't do is film all of this view because it'd be incredibly boring to watch. What I will do is film one run through first on the top surface with the first compound, the thicker cut, ultra cut compound. What I will then also do is between each 
layer of compound or each run of compound that I put on, I'll just take some more photos or film so you can see how it's gradually improving. And then basically we get to the end phase without you having to watch a sped up video of everything in action. Then I will film going around the edge so you can see how that works. I hope that makes sense. The other things that I, you need as you go along is I have some water here. I tend to put the compound on here, add a bit of water to help it spread as it's going around. And I also always wear my latex gloves just to keep my hands nice and soft and subtle. Right then, let's go on with this. I've got my sponge disc. I've marked out 105. Um, it's the one I'm going to use for the first compound. I tend to keep a separate disc, sponge disc, for each one so the compounds don't get muddled up. Um, I'm not sure it will make a massive difference, but this is a textured surface and you can get flat surfaces as well. I quite like using the textured ones. I can't tell you why. I think maybe it's um, all in my head. But essentially, I put the compound on like that, get my fingers a bit wet, another reason to wear a glove, and rub it over the surface there. Let's rub it off on here. I also have a bit of kitchen roll free. You can see this um, drill's got quite covered in compound over the years, but I tried to clean my hands a bit. I actually bought this drill, especially for doing polishing with and buffing with, because it's quite lightweight. It's a 12 volt Ryobi. I think it's a great thing. Uh, it was the lightest weight one I could get, and it lasts more or less long enough to polish and buff one guitar. So let's have a go. What I'm going to do is work my way around the guitar, and I'm going to use figure of eight shapes as I go along. Let's go. And what you should see happen, I'm not sure how well it will come up in the camera, is you get this sort of white mist that comes up, which is the compound being rubbed in. Now I'm not pushing too hard and also with this drill you can change the speed it rotates at. I'm not holding it down all the way. If you push too hard, it's going too fast and you're not moving, there's a chance you could burn the surface of the varnish that you've put on and you don't really want that to happen. So I'm not going to speed this up, I'm going to keep it in real time. Like I said, I'm not going to film the whole thing because that would just be too long. But I like keeping things in real time so you can see exactly how I'm working on it. I think I'm going to go over this just a little bit more with those figure eights again. And I'm going to go slightly around the edges. just to make sure nothing's missed out. Later on, I'll show you how I actually do the edge surfaces. Right, so that's gone in. It's actually now covered in this kind of white finish. What I'll do now is I've got my cotton rag. I use this cotton rag specifically for the 105. Again, I've got cotton rags and sponges and chamois cloths for each of the separate three compounds. I'll rub it down. So I'm rubbing off that white stuff. Hopefully you can already see there's a little bit of a difference in the shine coming through. Um, then I'll use the chamois rag to go over it. And we can see there maybe a slight difference. That's take one. I'm now going to do exactly the same, put a bit more on. bit of water on it, rub it round, have a sip of tea. This one I'm going to speed up, it'll be the last one I film and then we just jump ahead to seeing it between stages. So this is it after the second coat of the 105. And this is after the third coat of the 105. Right, I'm going to skip ahead now to the 205, the ultra finishing polish, the mirror glaze. Let's see what happens. Now with the 205, it's actually thinner 
than the 105 and actually sometimes it tends to gather a bit around any cavities like this so I tend to scrape that up with my finger fingers sometimes I'll just gather up what I've got put it back on the sponge so this is the first coat of the 205 put on again you could do all this by hand with something like a sponge or a chamois lever let's see what's happening is it getting more mirror like a bit more shiny here we go rubbing off the second coat of the 205 see again it's getting there more mirror like right that's the third coat Right, just cleaning up the fourth pass over with the 205 Maguires. I'm not sure it needs any more coats with this. You could keep going. I'm sure it's possible if you did five, six, seven coats with each of them, you might get a slightly more glazed finish, but I'm not sure it's gonna make so much of a difference. So let's try the turtle wax now. This is turtle wax original. I've tried a few different turtle waxes before. I like this one. Um, I definitely think it makes slightly, a slightly improved sheen on what I've got here. But that might be quite subjective. So this one's more like a paste as opposed to a liquid. So let's swap to my turtle wax pad and then I'll scoop this out with my thing fingers and I rub it in to the surface of, it, of the foam with a bit of water just to help it spread. This one particularly does tend to gloop up in holes like here we've got from the original how the original guitar was set up the screw points and the holes for the strings going through the body and the bridge being screwed on and then we've got the scratch plate holes well I can always clean them out after. Exactly the same principle. Not too fast, figure eight. Sped this one up a bit. Because the compound's a bit thicker than the liquids of the Maguire's, it does need a bit more elbow grease to rub it off. Here we go, let's have a look at this one. It's a subtle difference, but I think it's good. Right. I'm going to do one more coat with this. Well, I hope you're finding this video useful. And if you are, please do like, subscribe, share. I've got lots of other videos like this. One which actually looks at stripping paint from a body, maybe to prep before you've resprayed and got to this stage where you're now buffing. I also have videos on guitar maintenance. You can support me through my Redbubble account where I sell things like this jumper, t-shirts, the mug. I also have a load of stickers. Some people just buy a sticker of the logo that they can put on their various things, their guitar cases, just to show their support. I'm also on various other social medias, so do give me a follow. Anyway, let's get back to the video. So here we go. That's the second and final coat of the Turtle Wax. Hopefully you can see the shine that this body's now got. There we go, look at that. Way improved on what it had before. So there's only a, li there's a limit to how shiny you can get just using sandpaper. Right, now normally when I would do a body, I would do each of the compounds over the entire body, not just the top surface like I've done the front surface like I've done for this video. So I do all of the first one, the ultra compound cut, 105 on the front the back and the sides three or four times then the 205 front back sides three or four times and then the turtle wax front back and sides maybe twice what I'm going to do now just for the video before I end the video is just show you how I might do the sides of a of a body some people might clamp it down but I would simply just hold it in place I've got this foam here and I'll just hold it and work around sometimes I even sit down and hold it between my legs while I'm working around it. Let's have a quick look at that. So I'll go back to the 105. Um, here it is. Put a bit on. 
it is awkward to get into the spaces like around the horns here. A little bit of water. The, the one reason I would do it all um, all over the whole body one at a time is so you don't accidentally go over what you've just done. If you go from a really high glaze to use like the 105 again, it will probably get rid of part of the shine on it. You want to be careful that when you're coming in at an angle, you're not bashing any of the body of the guitar with anything that's not the sponge or the foam. And this is where sometimes you just need elbow grease and to do bits by hand. So I'm going to go over this one more time before I put any more compound on, one more time like this. Then I'm going to go over it with my um, cotton rag, the chamois cloth, then do another coat of 105, possibly a third coat, then work on the 205, then the turtle wax. Then the body will be totally finished. So let's skip to the end. So here's the finished body. I buffed all the way round with all the different compounds you can see now it's got that mirror glaze all the materials etc i've used i'll put a link to in the comments with my amazon affiliate link so you can buy them there anyway once again thanks for this, your support do go and follow me on other social medias subscribe here because i've got a load more videos coming soon until then happy strumming